What's up, everybody? We are back. John Della Rose here, DellaRose.com. This is the Star Trek graphic novel collection. I am on volume four now, as you can see. And this is Spock Reflections. And this is by... Who's by? Scott Tipton and David Tipton, who uh, I've interacted with just briefly on Twitter. And they seem like very nice guys. And uh, I they have like a old pop culture blog, or at least Scott does. It's pretty neat. And I want to I wanna look at that a little bit more. Uh, layouts by David Messina and a bunch of a bunch of different people are kind of doing the inks and finishes. This is a tough one, um, and it is old Spock reflecting on his past for four issues, and so he's got this like thing where he's going to Earth and um, wants to warn them of something, and then he's going to go back to Romulus, and you you actually get different eras where you see like this is Generations era, and then you see him like kind of as a kid. And you see him growing up and having problems. You see him at the beginning of the Enterprise with Captain Pike. And I'm skimming through this quickly because there's really... These are just a bunch of vignettes that are strung together by that future storyline where he's like on a ship heading back to Earth with this alien guy. Um, and so there's a lot of just standing around and talking. And there's not a lot of drama to these old stories because they're just like nostalgic stories meant to hit your nostalgia points. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of uh, Star Trek and Star Wars comics that kind of do this because they kind of just like add to the continuity or whatever um, to make it more uh, full feeling. And I find it tough because, uh, you know, it's just like there's you're not unless you're like really super into the character and really know the history and timelines, you're really not going to be that into the story. And that's what it is. So the concept makes it tough. Um, these guys really know their Star Trek history. Uh, from what you can tell, because like I said, you go back into all these time moments, it's like, oh, they nailed that character and that character and that character. So if you know your history there and you know how that worked uh, in history, uh, it works out really well. Just a tough concept um, to string over four issues. I mean, I would have, uh, I feel like it might've worked a little better as a one shot uh, than this. Art's okay. Like I said, it's a very, uh, very flat expressions and lots of, lots of sitting around talking. So um, there's not a ton to it there. Uh, I think the coloring is a little on the bland side also to where it kind of washes a lot of stuff out. Uh, it doesn't help out that much either. So it's, a, you know, there's nothing bad about it. It was, it was okay. Um, it's just, it's just like, unless you are just into that, like history, 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 um, you know, there's, there, there wasn't a ton of a, a plot there to really grip you through things. Now, very different with the gold key issue. And the reason I buy these is because the gold key Star Trek uh, went for like 60 something issues and there are no complete reprints of it except for uh, in these graphic novel collections. So each one has one issue and this one has a planet of quick change and, uh, and Spock gets uh, basically uh, these aliens talking inside of his head and they were vaporized for some reason um, by, by a, an asteroid. And they were, um, uh, Spock, like, can, like, make a chemical rocket to shoot at the planet to bring them all back. And they all just show up back. <laughs> it's very bizarre and does not make a ton of sense. Uh, but I kind of love it, uh, to be honest. It's just, like, this campy, weird stuff. Um, they don't have a lot of, you know, great Star Trek looks to them. You can barely tell that's, that's Shatner. But, uh, and of course, like the uniform's not quite right. They have weird backpacks and like Land Rovers and things like that because they didn't really have Star Trek fleshed out when they had the drawings of this. And then one bad alien guy refuses to get out of Spock's head basically and wants to just like uh, kidnap the starship at the end of it. And uh, they have to sedate him and, uh, and get that thing out of him by doing some weird transporter experiment. So a lot happened in this issue. As you can see, I'll, like this is a much ten more tense interesting thing uh this is cool sci-fi stuff right here very enjoyable this is written by who wrote this uh dick wood is the is the uh is the scripter and i guess he used to work for dc and albert G gelati um who uh is i guess a main gold key artist back there and gelati stuff's okay um everything's kind of serviceable in here but i wouldn't say it's uh it's uh anything fantastic backgrounds look a little too much like earth different earth scenarios and deserts rather than like alien worlds like they try a little bit here with these weird colored 
structures in the background, but not not enough, I don't think. But it was a fun story. This is the type of thing that I love and wish there'd be a lot more of. So that's that's fun. They really don't take risks like this with Star Trek stories anymore. Uh, you know, there's too much continuity, I guess, and everybody wants to play with continuity and, and you know, nostalgia beats uh, at this point in these franchises rather than having them really explore strange new worlds like this. Um, and this, this is kind of the heart of what Star Trek's about here. And so that's why I, I enjoy this. So overall, it's pretty fun. Uh, I'd say, you know, seven and a half to eight out of 10, somewhere in there in between. Nothing bad about it. Just uh, just wasn't super excited on the main storyline, but on the uh, gold key, I mean, that, that was that made, made it very much worth the read. And we'll see you next time, guys. Hit that like and subscribe button. We'll be back.